everyone, my name is Admir with UTS Equipment Company, formerly United Truck Sales, and welcome to our first YouTube video. Back in 2020, I wrote a blog post about the Kook J diesel engine titled Kook J versus Everybody, and how it compares to the diesel engines from all the other manufacturers in the compact tractor segment, 25 to 55 horsepower. I want to use this video to talk about some of the things I discussed in that article and uh, go from there. So let's get into it. When we signed on with TYM, we got this binder. And as you can see, it's even the old TYM logo. It talks about prospective dealer information, amongst, among a lot of other things. But it also gives a detailed comparison of all the different tractor brands, the engines in those tractors, and how they can basically, the details of how the engines are built, the fuel systems, the um, emission systems on there. My article is basically a summary of this information. And when I was reading this, I was blown away at how the other engines are, in my opinion, nowhere near the Kook J diesel engine. And here's why. At the heart of a Kook J diesel engine is the mechanical fuel injection pump. I don't have one to show you because we've never had to replace one in four years. But this right here are fuel lines, mechanical fuel injector. The mechanical fuel injection pump is the heart of a mechanical diesel engine. The pump meters and times the fuel, directly injects it into each cylinder, and there's no electronics here. You know, the pump itself has a couple of wires going to it, power to a fuel solenoid. Um, I believe it reads RPM off of there as well. But old school reliability. Stone Age, this stuff still works as long as you got fuel and some juice to turn the motor. Um, how does this compare to the other brands? Well, everybody else uses a what's called a common rail diesel engine. The heart of a common rail diesel engine is this thing, the ECM. Without this, a common rail diesel engine is a boat anchor. It will not run. You will never in a million years get it to run without this ECM. It has to tell the engine every part of what it needs to do for that engine to run. It tells the injectors when to fire, how much fuel to inject. It reads all of the sensors. And the worst thing about this is if there's a fault code, sometimes you might not even be able to read that code without dealer level software. I'm a dealer and I hate that dealer level software. So if you can avoid that at all costs, please avoid it. Kook J, Kook J, Kook J. What ties the ECM to everything else is the wire harness. This is the engine wire harness off of a Cummins ISX engine. Tractor common rail diesel engines basically have the same thing. A common rail engine cannot run without a wealth of information. That ECM needs to know the position of all the sensors it needs, real-time real fuel information, real-time pressure information. It needs all of these wires to run. Now, compare this to a Kook J diesel engine, sorry, TYM diesel engine. Um, it only needs a few wires. It needs a fraction of this. Now, Wire harness like this on an on-road truck that's never really going to see dirt or um, real contaminants, it's fine. It has its own problems. This one here melted. Um, but introducing something like this on a tractor, which not only spends its life in moisture, in mud, in dirt, but usually sits in a barn that may or may not have a rodent in it, this is only inviting problems which a compact tractor should not have. You cut any one of these wires, your engine is either gonna be throwing fault codes, it's gonna run very poorly, or it's not going to run at all. Why would you choose something like this over the simplicity of, I'm holding this because again, I don't have a mechanical fuel pump, but an engine which only has a couple of wires for the basic sensors. This thing, again, ties the ECM to all the other parts of the engine. One of the things 
that it ties to is the fuel system. This is a high pressure fuel rail. What this does is it supplies fuel to the fuel injectors of the engine. Now, this works a bit different than this. In this case, each line getting its own individually timed and metered fuel. In this case, this whole fuel rail is constantly supplied with high pressure fuel. What the ECM and the wire harness control is the firing of the injector. So not only does the fuel system need, for example, the sensor right here to control, to tell it what the fuel pressure is, but it needs the ECM and all the wires to link to the fuel injectors to be able to make the whole system work. TYM does not. Basic old school reliability, overly complicated, not needed on a compact tractor. Now, this is just the brains, the guts of the engine. We haven't even gotten into the after treatment part yet. When it comes to after treatment systems, we're talking about a specific horsepower class of tractor. Basically, it's all gonna have a DPF. There's one that doesn't, we'll get into that later. The DPF, in my opinion, is not that bad of a thing. It keeps the air cleaner. It makes the air that you're breathing as an operator on that tractor cleaner. The DPF collects soot, burns it off, um, that's its job. You can't really get away from it. The government has said you gotta have it, you gotta have it. Um, along with that DPF, however, there are tons of other emissions technologies that are found on other diesel engines that are not found on the TYM. One of those monstrosities is the EGR valve. This is an EGR valve. Off a semi-truck, considerably larger than what you would find on the tractor versions, but this thing is responsible for more engine failures than any other, in my opinion, emissions-related component ever invented. What this thing does is it takes dirty, hot exhaust air and sends it directly into your intake. If you can avoid this, over any other emission system, this is the one to avoid. This kills engines. Remember, this thing shoots hot exhaust air into the engine. You can't just shoot hot air into the engine, you gotta cool it off first. So usually, anything that has one of these also has an EGR cooler. What is an EGR cooler? Well, it cools the EGR gas. Hot air comes through one side, comes out the other side. The inside is filled with coolant. These things are prone to failure. Not only can you get external engine leaks by bad seals, broken couplings, any of a number of things, but they'll fail and corrode internally. What that means is you'll suddenly have a coolant leak. You don't have a drip, but you're losing coolant. Well, it's going directly into the engine and the engine's burning it off. These are usually, look at this one, it's stainless steel. They usually are stainless steel. And again, I go back to this every time. If you can avoid having this on your engine, you should. There's no reason to have this on your engine if you don't need to have it. And just about all the other brands use it except for TYM. Now, we've talked about ECMs, we've talked about wire harnesses, fuel rails. Um, I think I've talked about a little bit how it compares to the mechanical system on a TYM. There's a brand out there, Mahindra. They run an Eco CRD engine is what they call it. It does not have a DPF. Sure, it does not have a DPF. What it does have is all of the other systems. It's a common rail engine. It has the wire harness, high pressure fuel rail, all the sensors that go along with it. It has an EGR valve and an EGR cooler. And what it also has, which I think is a ticking time bomb in these engines, is wet liners. This is a wet liner. The piston goes, it moves through here. This is the cylinder of the engine. Most small diesel engines 
have a, a block, right? It's a machined solid block. It does not have these liners. This comes from the world of heavy duty trucks where it is a very good thing to be able to overhaul and rebuild an engine without pulling the whole thing out of the truck and tearing it all down and machining and honing and all kinds of stuff. It's called an in-frame. These allow you to do an in-frame, so rebuilding the engine inside the frame of a truck. They're very nice for that purpose, but to have this on your tractor is just not necessary. Semi-trucks run 30, 50,000 hours. How many of us are getting that many hours on a compact tractor? Nobody. What these introduce is failure points that you don't see on engines that don't have them. Counterbore. This is the, basically the lip where this sits inside the engine. Prone to pitting, corrosion, sunken liners, all kinds of issues. These have O-rings because this is a wet sleeve, so coolant is constantly circulating around this. Those O-rings can fail. They will leak. All of a sudden, your engine oil level is rising and you do not know where that leak is coming from. Well, guess what? You need a new in-frame because these rings, these O-rings, need to be replaced. Most of this is usually caused over time or poor maintenance. Most people on their compact tractor don't run nearly enough hours to justify this. So, while you don't have the DPF to deal with in a Mahindra, you have this, in my opinion, ticking time bomb. That is all the information I want to talk about in this video. Um, it, you know, it was more of a summary to kind of give everybody a visual about the things I talk about in that blog post. In the future, what we're going to do is we're going to share some real-time data with um, our audience. Basically, we sell a lot of tractors. We have a lot of these tractors in the field. And I'm going to talk about real warranty claims, the issues we've seen, how TYM has handled them. And uh, we think we're going to provide uh, some pretty decent content for our channel. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.